In this video, I will introduce you the basics of nominal data models. Nominal data is one of the four levels of measurements that many introductory level research methods books explain. So the idea of a nominal model is that you have a variable that is categorical and there is no order to the categories. For example, Finland, Sweden and Norway coded as one, two and three would be nominal because there is no order. You can't say that Finland is, is more than Sweden or Norway is more than Sweden. Regression analysis normally assumes uh, at least interval scale and now we look at the nominal scale. So how do we deal with variables that are co choices between different alternatives? We use uh, the logistic regression or probability regression framework for this kind of analysis. And I'm going to take a look at the logistic regression analysis perspective. The logistic perspective are, or the probability regression perspective is roughly similar. You just do the math slightly differently. So let's take a look at our, our choice between three categories. Let's say it's Finland, Sweden and Norway. And uh, we have probabilities of these three categories uh, expressed as odds. So the odds of choosing Finland versus Sweden and odds for choosing uh, Norway versus Sweden, for example. If we know two odds for these choices, then we can always calculate what's the third, the odd for the remaining comparison. So we can calculate the remaining comparison like that. And uh, so we only need to estimate two odds and then we know the third one as well. So that allows us to uh, have one category as a reference category. So we estimate a model that explains the choice between Finland and Sweden and choice between Finland and Norway, for example. Then when we know the odds, we can calculate the probability. So for example, the probability of category one is the probability of category one divided by the sum of probabilities of all these categories. We can uh, express that uh, as odds like that. And that gives us the, the probability of category one as a function of the odds. So when we uh, do uh, two models that explain two different odds, then we can calculate the probabilities of all three of these outcomes, Finland, Sweden and Norway, and that allows us to calculate the likelihood and estimate the model. So this is uh, this idea of, of, of uh, explaining two different odds or more than two different odds using different sets of regression analysis is called multinomial regression analysis. You can use logistic regression analysis or you can use probability regression analysis or you can use some other kind of s curve model. So one category is set as reference and then we calculate m minus one where m is the number of categories of regression, logistic regression models or other regression models. And uh, there's an important assumption independent of irrelevant as alternatives. So for, that means that for example if we compare, uh, if we ask a person where he or she would like to live, we give the options Finland, Sweden and Norway, then uh, the uh, the relative of uh, the odds between those uh, different categories shouldn't uh, change if we introduce, let's say, uh, Denmark as a fourth option. So when we add other alternatives, they are not relevant. They don't make a difference for these comparisons because we are comparing the odds for choosing Finland uh, against Sweden and that odd shouldn't depend on whether Denmark is an option. This is something that uh, you should be justifying based on the theory when you do this kind of models. Let's take a look at an empirical example of what this kind of models look like. The actual estimation is, is pretty simple. You just calculate, uh, you estimate these regression coefficients uh, as, as a one set of models and you adjust them all, you calculate likelihood the same way as a logistic regression model. Now you just uh, have uh, more than one probability. Here's an empirical example. So this is a paper about using multinomial logistic regression analysis in organizational research methods. So it's, it's a pretty good explanation of what these models are for and how they should be presented. The uh, question that this paper asks as a demonstration is how companies choose their internationalization mode. So you can expand internationally in, in multiple different ways and they have three different ways. One is exports, Another is joint venture, which means that you, uh, you start a company with somebody else uh, that is also already in the market. And then there is uh, the, the subsidiary. So you just start a new subsidiary that you own yourself in the foreign market. So which, uh, which of these modes a company chooses is the research question. They have uh, 
two models. So model A here has three equations. Model B has three equations. So they have uh, three uh, options for the categorical variable and they have three, three equations. The reason why there are three equations is that uh, it's uh, just easier to present the result if you have these all these three possible comparisons here. So uh, this is redundant. It's not actually needed for estimating the model, but you can calculate the third model for the third odds afterwards if you want to. Then uh, the reference category here is expert, is owned subsidiary. So you are est they're estimating a model for, for um, the odds of export versus wholly owned subsidiary and joint venture versus wholly owned subsidiary. So they're estimating two logistic regression models and these coefficients then are give the, uh, the probabilities of the different alternatives. When we look at the model indices, they are just repeating. Uh, so this is one model and this is another model and they're just repeating the indices for the first model for uh, every single equation in that model. It doesn't, uh, you don't need to do that, they just do that for some reason. So the indices are, we have some uh, pseudo R square, we have uh, AIC, we have a uh, likelihood ratio test, the density model comparison uh, against the new model. Then we have uh, some kind of pseudo R square classification rate and then we have uh, the likelihood ratio test between these two models. So is the, uh, the model B does it explain the data better than the model A that doesn't have the firm size variable which was their interesting variable. So the, the logic of using these models is the same as any other models. You have the control variables only model then the variable, then the interesting variable and the controls model, then you compare using nested model comparisons. So how do you then interpret these results? The problem is that uh, these regression coefficients uh, can't really be interpreted directly because a, a negative positive effect, for example, here could actually, uh, when you consider all the effects, it could actually correspond to a negative uh, change in, pro in, in probability of getting uh, this particular category out of the categorical variable. The uh, way to interpret these models is again by plotting and this paper shows a, a really nice way of, of plotting the data. So you choose some sets of interesting variables that you hold constant and then you vary one variable. For example, uh, here is the firm size which is their uh, interesting variable. They have logged it. I would have uh, preferred to have the, uh, the raw metric but you can do it that way as well. And uh, then you look at how is the, uh, the predictive probability for each category when we change the value of firm size holding everything constant and then you interpret. So the interpretation of these plots would be that smaller companies tend to go for exports and then as the company uh, size increases uh, the joint venture uh, odds or chances increase as well but not by much. It's much more common that you go for a subsidiary. So it's basically a choice between uh, ex exports and subsidiary but a small fraction of companies mostly in the medium size go for a joint venture as well. So that's then you interpret what, that, what do these graphics mean. So you don't interpret the actual numbers because that's very difficult to do. This paper also provides another graphical interpretation which is uh, the marginal effect. So that is the marginal predictions. And this is the marginal effect. So it tells uh, which direction is the probability moving when the company size increases. So we can see that the, the probability uh, increases it's positive. It increases most rapidly when you are uh, a medium sized company. And when you start to uh, become larger and larger, then the probability uh, increases, but the increase is not as steep. The reason being that the S curve is, is uh, very close to, uh, to being one. I think uh, this is a lot easier way to interpret the results, but some prefer this, uh, these lines that tell what is the direction that these lines are moving. The paper also uh, makes a strong case that interpreting these models using the actual coefficients is a bad idea. And they have a recommend list of recommendations here and they make a strong statement that the graphical interpretation is better because you are less likely to make mistakes and also modern statistical software such as state on R will uh, make these plots for you. So you have to do them manually. So they are, the chances of doing mistakes is, is not as great as would be when you interpret the regression coefficients directly. 